the surrounding area, do we allow charges to go onto these particular parts? Well, I should be in that just, do you think that long straight going into Thurston Street, which under this scheme has not been earmarked for car parking? So you can see what happens. So the whole road will be parked by people, and the car parks will be empty. The other points that Jerry made earlier, uh, Councillor Ellis, in relation to uh, places dying off. You know, that's my ward, which is uh, Wadham's ward, and uh, Bromborough Car Park. If Bromborough Car Park is charged, I'll tell you now, Bromborough Village Shopping Precinct will die. Now, the effect of that is you'll have a charge to the authority of putting the car parking machines in. People won't use them. They'll literally go across the road to the Croft Industrial Estate. The oil shop is there. The shops all die off. Then you've lost the revenue from the rent. Now, I asked at the very beginning in relation to uh, the city region what's going to happen with the business rate. The effect of this in certain areas could actually decimate that particular issue and actually cause the, the authority a lot more loss in revenue just by bringing something in. I lose a lot more. So I think that's an issue that needs to be addressed. But I would like to know what the, the re regulation in relation to the section 55 is, because it does say it's clear local authorities should never use park sorry, never use parking charges to raise revenue. And if there is already charges in place, if the surplus it is then got to be used for the upkeep and maintenance of the highways for free movements of traffic. Now that's the most important part. Now, to me, it looks like we're going to bring something in, and I'm wondering whether we're doing it legally or not, and I need to know the answer to that. I'll give you a, a, an example. East Lothian decided to do this a few years back. They put car parking charges on their, all their company car parks. It cost them a fortune to implement it, mark them out, bring in the machines. Nobody used them. Within three years, the company council was in debt because it paid for all this implementation to take place and we weren't getting the revenue back from it. Now, the effect of what we propose to do here could have a similar effect in certain areas on our own. And it's something that we're promoting more than anything now. There's a presentation later on in relation to the, the work that was done by the working party on getting more people to come and visit the world. This will have the opposite effect. Thank you. Thank you. 
and that's something we have in Corky. I know my colleague further, further that will bring a proposal around that matter later on. But I think we need to point out these are proposals. They're not decisions. And they're clear proposals. The decision will be made. Yeah. Well, the committee will make a recommendation. It will go to the cabinet. And the cabinet will make the final decision on it. But whatever recommendation goes will come from this committee. At the moment, we haven't, as far as I'm concerned, we haven't got all the information that I would be, be want to see before I can think on to a judgment or a valid decision. We're not there at the moment. And I'm disappointed when keep, people keep naming people here because it's not in the hands of any individual politician at the moment. It's an office of courage that we either say we accept or we don't accept. And if we don't accept, then we have to do something different. But I must agree with mine that the problem lies not with this council, but lies with the government and their consistent culture of this Borough Council. And we can shake our head, but the reality is there. These are difficult decisions we make. I'm not saying I agree, but I agree with the decision. But I would want evidence that would convince me either way. And at the moment, I haven't got all that evidence. So I think we need to put the blame where it clearly lies. Thanks, Rob. Uh, yes, and I will reiterate again. We are at present going through the process. Part of that process, as I said before, is a consultation with the public. And this committee tonight is part of that due process. And I, I for one, welcome it. It's showing clarity, it's showing that we're open, and uh, we're clear in, our, in what we're trying to do. And tonight we're, we're explaining what we're trying to do in an open and honest way. Thank you. Um, Tracy. Thank you. Through you, Chair, I've just got a couple of questions. The first one is, apart from the notices around the uh, lampposts and the uh, publication in the paper, what other consultation is taking place with the community in relation to the charges? And my next question is, I'm a little bit confused because I sent an email to um, one of the officers to ask in particular in Cromwell, I know that's not the board I represent, but it's where I live, was being considered for the parking charges. I had an email telling me it wasn't going through on this proposal, so I'd like that clarified, please, as well. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Rob, would you like to respond to that, please? Uh, yeah, the consultation uh, question, uh, Chair. The, the current process with your good selves to, uh, to consult on this option is uh, added to with the, uh, the TRO. Thank you. 
explain a little bit further about what, what Steve's just clarified there. So, the statutory notice has to go out. Now, I think signs that people may have seen in the country parks, I've seen them in the country parks. This is part of the process. It does not mean that a decision has already been made. It's a statute. Please. It's a statutory duty of the council. The statutory notices go in the papers, the Whittle Globe, the Whittle News, the Liverpool Echo, um, and the Whittle View, and they also go up in the country parks. But it does, that's part of the process. It does not mean that any decision has been made. And, and I, I reiterate once again, these are just proposals we're, we're discussing tonight. I thought I'd try and clarify that a little bit further for the, for the members of the public. Um, Steve. Thank you, Chair. Can I draw to the attention of the committee and the members a report that was published by the Council 30th of March last year. The report I'm referring to here is a Cabinet member decision and it's the annual report on parking and enforcement that was sent to the Councillor Whitting and the Cabinet member. Page 4 of this report, um, it should be stressed that the Council does not carry out parking enforcement as a revenue raising exercise. Page 10 of the report shows the financial information for parking for the last five years of the Council. From 2010, that year the loss was 31,000, the next year was 61,000, then it was 84,000, it did come down to 56,000, these are all losses, and then the final year of this report it was a loss of 119,000. That's a total loss of 351,000. Um, so obviously the concern is, if we've been doing that with car parking charges, what's going to change? And the final note on this report is section 8, 8 2, which says, Regular publication of parking services and financial data enables the Council to meet its commitment to be transparent and to demonstrate that parking enforcement is not used as a means of raising revenue.
You say council, these are council office proposals, and they are proposals, I, I understand that. But it is actually in the cabinet's hands and the leader's hands, and they're very well known to say, do you know what, we're not going to touch this, we're not going to go anywhere near it. The, the leader of council did that when the fire station was proposed in Greensby, it didn't go to any committee, and so it's in his, it's in his hands to do it tonight. But what I want to know as well is what um, discussions have anybody, any of the uh, officers had with public health, about the impact on public health, about the impact on healthy Wirral. So that could, that could be answered. And you made certain facts, uh, claims, chairs and facts about how much of this council has to say. Well, I'd just like to make a proposal to this committee that might be helpful to Cabinet. You can scrap the um, newspaper for 250 pounds. Yes, yes. You can get this the proposal from the council office, so for a new super director of 80,000. Yeah. You can also scrap the, uh, the policy office of the leader of the council for 45,000. And as my colleague Cantor said, there's uh, some money going into feasibility studies for a golf course. And we also do have a nice million in the bank, so maybe we want to uh, remind Cabinet of that as well.
right within our, our remit to look at. Um, Chris. Thank, thank you, Jim. It, it, it's just to, to remind the committee uh, that, <coughs> if it's not aware, that apart from the people who are here today in the Facebook, there are four or five petitions out there that have already generated over 15,000 signatures opposing these charges. That there's uh, a petition for country parks, there's two petitions for country parks, which between them have got over 9,000. Uh, New Brighton's over 3,500. Even my own small town of Morton, when we started a, or two ladies started an online petition, and we put our copy petitions around in four days, has raised, uh, has raised 2,000 signatures in four days. Uh, there's also another petition opposing the whole thing online, which only started a day or so ago. 